everyone um sorry you haven't got the other camera on today so you're just gonna have to you know deal with my hands luckily you don't have to look at my face so what we're we doing today so we are looking at our crackle range so we have a really nice range of different crackles so we have the crack on crackler which is a two-part we have the crack on paste which you can get in black or white which is just a one part crackle and then we've got a crack on glaze which is um a three part actually so you have paint crack on anyway we'll go through all of that in more detail so the crackler you get really really fine cracks like the cracks that you would see on porcelain now let me just get you an example or oh, on old paintings so can you see this really really beautiful fine crackler it's really really delicate let me see whether it will is the focus on the bottom or is it automatic bottom. focus okay so you won't see that okay so really really lovely fine detail crackling which is gorgeous and you get this glaze as well look at that so it looks like a varnish so if it was on um furniture um, you get this protective varnish over the top, which is just gorgeous. Hi, everybody. Hi, Stacey. Hi, Kerry. Hi, Anne. Teresa, Angela, Tanya, or Tanya, um, Anne. Lovely to see you all. So this is the crackler. Okay, very, very fine detail. The paste, which you can get in white or black, gives you really big cracks so um this is one that i've colored so you can see that if you put it on thick you get big cracks if you put it on thin you get little cracks okay so that is your crack on paste all righty and then the crack on glaze is what you put on in between two coats of acrylic or a water-based paint so you get this effect so three totally different effects all beautiful but all different in their own way so this is fairly smooth so um, someone asked me whether you can stamp over the top yes you can um, but you will get some um, texture coming through this one it just depends where you stamp if it's over this really thick area which is almost like dragon skin um, you obviously are going to get all these textures coming through but if it's on an area where it's very very thin then um, you're going to get a different effect and the crackler yes you can definitely stamp over the top because it's so super fine it's just absolutely gorgeous okay so let me just demonstrate each one um, in order so let me just put these back where they were okay so First of all, I will do the crackler. So they all come with some instructions, basically, because of course on the um, on the tubs you can't actually, you know, we can't put instructions on there. You'd never be able to read them. It's really, really easy. Using a brush, apply base coat, which is this one. So we've even put labels on the top as well, so easy to see. So I'm just going to do a, a sample piece here. Uh, just It's just a piece of scrap board that I had, and I've just put some um, paint over the top. So the colours that I used, if you're interested, are the Junk Disorderly um, Olive Waistcoat. So this is a matte coverall paint it's also for fabric and this is peppermint tea which is a matte paint also okay so those are the colors i put on here so the first thing you're going to do is actually put the base coat on so you can see let me just dry my brush there we go you can see it's a very very fluid milky white consistency but it's 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 like the consistency of milk actually so really really thin so you only need a small amount will go a long way so you can see one dip easily covers the whole of this 
and you've got more, more to spare. It doesn't matter which direction you paint it in at all, but just make sure you, you cover the area you want the crackler to appear. Okay, and then that's it. Obviously, this, this tub, this part is going to go a really long way. So there we go. And then this is just easily wash up in water. So I've just got a, a jar of water off screen there. Okay, so you're allowed to dry for an hour. So let me put that to one side. Um, and then let me bring this one in. And also this one. Just bear with me a second while I just get it out. There we go. So, say I want to do a little bit on here. I've already got a base coat on. You come back on with a top coat. And you just paint over the areas where you want that um, that crackler to appear. So instead of going all over it, like I've done with that green piece, I'm just putting small amounts in. You've just got to remember where it is, but you will be able to see it. Okay. But this is the waiting game. This is why you've got to have a little bit of patience because you need to allow it to dry for 24 hours. Okay. Now that, that is the bit that I don't like, don't like waiting. So for example, this one, I actually did a couple of hours ago, but you can see where I've actually put it because it's shiny. Okay. And you'll be able to see the cracks appearing. So there's no action here at all because it's only been a couple of hours and there's no point putting it near a radiator or a hot, hot gun because it needs to just react naturally and naturally dry because um, the two different coats uh, are made up of um, opposite um, products so that they actually dry at different rates so that they create uh, they pull apart and that creates the crack so there's no point actually trying to heat heat them because you're not going to get any difference at all but what you do get as I said is this cracking effect now when you first see it you won't actually notice the cracks terribly much you'll be able to see them but you need to sort of emphasize them so I can't think there's something wrong with the sound but I don't actually know um, know what's going on is the um, yeah the speakers are off? Yeah, because it's everybody's um, having problems with the sound. Oh, I'm sorry. If the what what does it? Um, I was going to say what does it sound like? Sound like you're a Dalek. Sounds like I'm a Dalek. Yes. Sorry, guys. That's not good. Okay, Alfie's going to have a look and see, but we've got all the same settings that we normally have. Um, yeah, the speakers are all off. That's weird. Okay, I'm going to try and crack on as it were. But everything seems to be normal, that's the weird thing. I am sorry guys, we'll see what we can do. So I'm going to use a really uh, dark pigment to fill in the cracks. So this one is called Leather Corset and it's actually translucent which is really good because you don't want it to cover up any of the actual pattern or design or the painting underneath. This is a piece of our rice paper by the way. This is one of the What's this one called? These are the fairies, aren't they? From the fairy set, so they're lovely. Um, oh, that's interesting. It's just since you were digging out the pick and Alfie sounds fine. It's Kay's mic, not Alfie. Well, Alfie's actually 
not got a mic for himself he's actually still using the same mic that I am he's just a few feet away that's a bit weird I've turned the volume down but, um... Okay, so what you do is I'm, I'm using a, a baby wipe that's not very damp or a, a, a cotton cloth that's just slightly damp, okay? And then I'm just going to rub that in to the cracks. And I know it looks a little bit scary at the moment. But just push that in and then with a clean area just try and wipe off the surface that's it just gently gently wipe off the surface cracks and you can see that it really brings out those crackles beautifully so if I do another little area for you. So again, this is leather corset and this is a translucent. Which is important because it means that you can see through the paint. So we're not going to cover up any of the um, painting underneath. Just to see what that's like. Is that... Okay, is that any better guys? One, two, one, two, hello. Um, so then, as I say, I've just rubbed that in and I'm just using a clean bit of, of cloth and I'm just going to gently take off the surface because you don't want to take off all of that crackle that you've just put on. Yeah, that seems to be back to normal. Okay, that's good. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know. Yeah. Okay, so... I'm just going to go over these areas again. So it just depends on how deep you want these cracks to look. I'm just going to turn my sound down. Oh, it is. And I'm just going to come over her arm a little bit so we can have a bit of a crackle there. So, yeah, you've got to be gentle that you don't take it all back out again. So it just depends how much you want going on. Because there is some on her dress. But I don't... Yeah, go on, I'll, I'll try a little bit on the dress. So let's... And I'm using the tiniest amount. It's, it's not even half a grain of rice. It's just a minute amount that I'm using. And then get a clean bit and then just gently, gently wipe away. So it's gorgeous, that isn't it? I think it's really, really lovely. It's effect. It's got low volume, low volume, I can't change it. Okay, so if I speak a little bit louder, is that better? Okay, because Alfie's turned down the volume just in case it no, was, it was that. The okay. Righty ho, so that's your crackler, okay? So crackler gives you that crackler effect that you get on pottery and on old paintings where the varnish is basically degraded. Um, and if I think I'm right, I think one is basically a, a, like a water base and one is like an oil base and that's why they crack. Um, so that is a beautiful effect. Okay, so that's one of the crackles that we can work on. And as I said, I've got this one drying. And you can feel that it's, it's tacky as well. And you will be able to see the cracks, but please be patient and leave it 24 hours. I tend to leave it overnight um, so that I'm not tempted to try and have a go the same day. Okay, so that's that one. So let me bring in uh, a black frame. So I'm going to be using the um, Crack-On glaze for this one. Okay, I'll just leave that there. 
So it's a black frame. I don't want it black. I'm going to paint it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some gesso on here. So I'm going to use um, just a thin layer of gesso. I don't need it completely white and covered. I just need need to make a, a key, um, which is just something to grab hold on for the paint that I'm going to use. So I'm going to be using um, a, a matte paint called porcelain and I've got a big pot left over so I'm continuing to use this up. So when your gesso is dry just give this a nice coat. This is a matte, as I said, a matte finish and it's got a really nice coverage and it's got, um, it's a lovely sort of creamy um, colour to it and it makes a great base for this um, because you, you, what you're aiming for is you want something that is a, a contrast so you want um, a light colour underneath and a dark colour on top or you need uh, vice versa for the cracks to show up okay so I'm not going to finish that one now I'll just put that to one side bear with me a minute okay so this is one that I did earlier so now I'm going to take um, a clean brush just make sure it's nice and dry so what's really important is you're actually using um, a water-based acrylic paint you don't want to be using uh, or a, you could use a poster paint anything that's sort of uh, a water base now this is a clear liquid as you can see and again it's quite runny so you get a lot for your money and then we're just going to put a thin coat on this frame okay and we're going to cover all sides of this i actually do the inside as well so as you know you can pick up frames quite cheaply from um, charity shops and supermarkets even um, but I, I like to pick them up at a um, well-known flat pack place by Ikea and then I'm just going to, as I say, put a thin coat all over it just make sure your paint underneath is dry and last piece okay, so that's just a nice thin coat Again, a little goes a long way, so that's quite good. So that's the crack on glaze. Again, clean my brush. I'm just going to put that somewhere to dry. Just wipe my hands. Okay, so how are we getting on with this? Oh yeah, so that's that's now dry. So I did this. Um, mm only just an hour ago I did it about 3 30 so that's nice and dry but you can see you, you've, you've got a like a glaze over it which is quite nice now this is the look we're going for so I need some townhouse teal Harry says do you clean with water yes it's a water clean up so I've just got a, a jug of water off camera here, just uh, plain cold water. Um, so it's very, very easy to clean up with all of these. So we've got our townhouse teal here. This is a, another matte colour. So it's got good coverage, so it's going to cover over where we've got. Now with this one, um, it's really important that you load up your brush and you give it one swipe because you can't rework it at all because well you'll see because it reacts so quickly okay so that's one swipe there a quick swipe there Yeah, go, don't go back, Alfie says. He's absolutely right. It's so tempting just to go back and do a little bit. 
just make sure it's covered. And it's already reacting. So you can see it's reacting beautifully. So again, just make sure your brush is loaded up. Sally says, what colour is this, please? This is Townhouse Teal. This is one of our matte paints. And again, if you don't know our paints, they are very concentrated and they are a true um, fabric paint, which means that they can uh, go onto fabric, dye fabric and thread, and they are washable afterwards at 30 degrees. So I'm just going to do the inside again. So don't faff K, just let it do its stuff. I think if I'd have left this longer, I would have got bigger cracks. But let's just be patient and give it a give it a minute. So again, that's townhouse teal from the matte range, and this is just clean up in in plain water and you can see it's already starting to crack with this. So it says, are they, acrylic they are an acrylic based paint, yes. So they're nice easy clean up, good coverage, they're very um, concentrated as well. So they will take water very very well. So I'm just going to clean my brushes while that has a go. Like that. And then I'm going to show you what I did with exactly the same colour, but on a tray. Okay, so let me just move that out of the way for a second. I might give that a bit of a blow dry. Everybody thinks the cops are coming for me. Oh, because of... <laughs> Alright, we're hiding in the shed. We're yeah. Fine. And what's really funny is uh, for um, our gardener is actually a retired um, detective, homicide detective. <laughs> So he's really interesting to talk to, um, but yes. Yeah, so he retired, and um, gardening you don't, is you his. Don't let him dig up all the garden, do you? <laughs> Alfie says we don't let him dig up all the garden, <laughs> and we don't have a patio to dig up either. <laughs> and Alfie's only been married once, so. Apparently. <laughs> I'm getting worried now, Alfie. <laughs> Do you have to heat set the paint on the fabric before washing? Um, you don't have to because it will cure naturally over time. So, for example, if you were to uh, paint onto a leather bag, which goes on beautifully, or shoes or anything like that, then no, I, I don't expect you to iron it. Um, and it does actually cure over time. But if you want to uh, wash it straight away, yes, give it an iron um, to set it. So you can see we're getting some lovely cracks on this already. Whoops, that's not good. Lynn's asked, what's the maximum amount of time you can leave the glaze on before you have to paint it? Um, well, when I was doing prep for the show on TV, I had one that I prepped um, about two days before and it still worked. Um, but I think the optimum time is, you know, pretty fresh. Give it a couple of hours well it depends on where you live and how humid it is you know so this was actually left um a couple of hours two or three hours when i did it um but this one i'm just gonna heat heat it and see whether that makes any difference at all yeah so that that is actually helping to move. I think it's it's worth letting it go first, letting it do its stuff first before you start helping it along, otherwise you're going to get bubbles. But I, oh I like this actually a lot. And the edges are looking good. So you can see how the contrasting colours looks really good. So you've got a light base and a darker top. And of course, it would look really good with a dark base and a lighter top coat. 
So if you were to go with a nice sort of whitey cream on the top and a dark indigo or something on the bottom or a browns. So I'm not going to overheat that but it, we've, we've got some more definition on some of these areas and I think um, these are the areas where the paint was thickest um, because um, I went back over that area here. Don't go back. So don't go back. <laughs> No, I'm not going to go back out of it, I promise. So that I really like. So that's this one. And the sides have cracked really nicely as well. Will it work on alcoholing? Will it work on alcoholing? I haven't tried it, to be honest. You mean th this one, the crack on glaze? Um, I don't see why not, to be honest. Um, because um, it's that... Uh, the paint is reacting with this, not what's underneath. So if you had alcohol ink underneath, allowed it to dry, put your crack on glaze on, allowed that to dry, and then went on with your acrylic paint, then yes, that should work. Um, I don't know whether it would actually work with alcohol ink over the top of this glaze, but all I would say is just, just try it out, which is, you know, what I did on scraps of card. And Shell, see what happens. Shell's asked, what's the optimum drying time for best results? Um, well, again, it depends on the atmosphere in your room, whether it's uh, really warm or quite cool or humid or dry. Um, I would say as long as it's um, as long as it's completely dry, you can actually see it's not tacky or anything like that. Um, I've just smudged that. That was not good. Okay. Um, so, so I would say a couple of hours for me um, in the summer. So it was quite, quite warmish when I did this, this one. But then this side, which I don't like because it's really, really fine cracks. This was when I left it for three days and then I came back and covered it. And it's out of focus that because I can't get further enough away. But the cracks are very, very small. So it doesn't actually match this side at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start again. I'm actually going to gesso this. And I, I might just rub it down a little bit because there are some texture on here. Rub it down, gesso it and start again and get, get it to match the other sides. Okay, and that's another, if you're wondering, that's another one of our white rice papers are William Morris rice papers. Um, okay, so that is the crack on glaze. Alright, and again, you know, that's going to look fantastic if you actually put it onto um, images as well. Harry says, are fingerprints essential? Are fingerprints essential? Absolutely. <laughs> oh dear, in my world they are anyway. Okay, so let me just bring some of these down. This was um not not when um, not when our gardener's around. No. <laughs> it's lovely actually. Um, this was this had some crackle glaze on it, um, but I only put a really really thin coat um, in just areas, and I think it's a little bit too subtle for me. But I do I do like the effect. Okay, so that's that one. Now on to the paste. So we have two types, a black and a white. So obviously... Harry's just asked about the other one, how long would it pot run? Um, I haven't actually measured it out, but because it's quite fluid and it covers quite a large area, um, you know, I think you're talking about quite a, a large number of square metres on this, but I haven't actually measured it all, I haven't painted it all out, um, which is quite a laborious job. So um, it just depends on how thick you put it on, but because it's quite fluid, as I say, I think that's probably going to last you a long time. And again, um, I think that would probably happily do a small chest of drawers, um, I would have, or would have said. You know, very small, very small set of drawers. Oh, I think you'd be all right with that. Okay, so <laughs> really like. 
Okay, so this one, um, I've actually, let me just put those there, then you know what I'm working on. Okay, so um, ironically, I've used some black gesso on here. So our black gesso is lovely because it is so super black. Um, we have quite a nice reputation for our gesso because it is a beautiful flat mat. Um, you can see that you get a gorgeous coverage on it. Whoops, come back, come back. And it is, um, because we use carbon black in it, which might be a bit more expensive, but you get the most beautiful black with it, which is gorgeous. So I'm just going to do the edges as well. This is just a piece of grey board. Um, I actually get these, these are a number eight tag, um, and these are from Tando. But obviously you can easily cut your own from a piece of packaging cardboard. If you've ever seen me do that. Okay, so that's my black gesso. Okay, and it dries really, really quick. So I will just put a blast on here. Just a no, it's just a cut screen, darling. Who says it's the best black gesso? Linda. Oh, thanks, Linda. That's brilliant. Okay, so what I've done, what I'd like to do, I should say, is just bring in a um, paint mat and there's my, let me just get some colour into this, okay, so what's this, this is Sargasso Sea, so this is just translucent paint, so this is really good for actually mixing, because you can add pigment to a product without actually adding any white to it at all. How on earth do I get so messy so quick? really really unbelievable sorry guys right so here we go so this is nice and thick um, and I would definitely give it a good sort of mix before you use it whether you, you put it on white or whether you colour it so David whatever. Said. Bill made a lovely card on his Facebook Live on Saturday using your paint and white gesso. He did, he did, yes, because he um he called me when he was doing it, actually. <laughs> he was messaging me uh, and I was too late to answer him. But <laughs> it, yes, it was gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um yeah, Phil doing mixed media so beautifully. Um very jealous. <laughs> but yeah, he did a lovely job. Okay, so there's loads here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, come in with, it's so annoying that, isn't it? I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so the good thing about using a grey board or MDF or anything like that is that um, it's not going to bow or anything like paper would. Um, so I'm going to just put a much bigger layer on than I did on uh, the sample that you're going to see that's actually dry um, because it's not as thick as I would like it to be. Just lean it up against that please darling. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm putting a really, really thick layer here, so you can see it's maybe one or two mil, and then just quite thin, and just to add colour down here, because this round here isn't going to crack because it's not thick enough, but this should give me a nice 
big crack just going to nothing over there. Okay. Laura says hello from Canada. Hi, Laura from Canada. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Whereabouts in Canada is she? Whereabouts in Canada are you? There we go. So I'm just putting a nice thick layer on um, because I like the big cracks you see. And then I'm going to get some normal card. And of course, you can actually do this through a stencil if that. Let me just grab a stencil. I haven't planned this bit, but um, I think this uh, sort of something with big, fairly big holes would be quite good. Oh, how about this one? Um, this is called Holy Moly. I love this stencil. So I've only got a bit left. So. I'm just going to put a little bit on here and of course you know I haven't used stencil tape which is going to cause a bit of a mess isn't it and I'm going to do it nice and thick and then just put the rest down here just quite thin so it goes off and into oblivion as it were. Okay. Oh that's gonna be nice isn't it? Right, water. Let me just stir spray that with water otherwise I'm going to have a very very mucky hard to clean stencil. So I'm just going to drench that in water so I don't have a bucket of water with me. There we go. And then I can clean that later. Okay, so that was the crack on paste in white mixed with the Sargasso Sea, which is lovely. So this one here dried out like this, but as I say, it was too thin and I was getting a little bit antsy thinking whether it was going to dry in time. So I put the heat gun on it. Big mistake. You should allow the cracks to develop first before you put a heat gun on it. So you can see that I'm really got quite a lot of little areas where there's no cracks but I love these really beautiful small cracks those are gorgeous but this one we're going to end up with nice big cracks okay they're going to end up looking like this which is so much nicer and of course these we're going to get cracks in those areas which is a lovely base for texture before you build up um, on top so let me put that somewhere to dry So with this one, I'm going to come in with my, where's my little cloth gone? I'm going to come in with my leather corset and just get the minutest amount. And then just Stacy, what is the name of your palette you're using? Are you right? Oh, um, yeah. Well, that was an old um, paper palette that I had left out. In fact, I was doing some tidying up, and that was an old painting palette that I had. I think I got it from the works um, originally, but now I use. Um, my paint palettes, which are um, which will uh, shine on one side, rough on the other, and these are good because you can wash them. But I just thought I'd use up the rest of this just because it was sat there in my cupboard, and I really, really don't like that at all. So <laughs> I'm 
He's just laughing his head off at me. <laughs> I'm allowed to change my mind. <laughs> What's this one? Let's get the uh, Sargasso Sea out. And let's just put that colour back in. Okay. That's better. That's better. And then can see those. Suzanne has asked, what was the original blue? Uh, the original blue was Sargasso Sea. Oh. Okay. Yes, that's better. And then I'm going to come in with some of the, the black, which is, um, it's not a true black, it's like a, a grey charcoal grey. That's why it's called charcoal. <laughs> you are awful. <laughs> you really, really are. <laughs> and again, this is really, really thick and gloopy, so give it a good a good mix before you use it. Oh, it's such a lovely, lovely colour. And I'm going to put a really thick layer on top of here, on this side. So you can see how much I'm putting on, because I want some nice thick cracks to appear. And I know I'm putting it over the top of black and this sort of blue. But then I can add colour on top again because I want to be using um, some sprays, some of my vivid sprays on top on another <coughs> another session when I do the um, the vivids, which will probably be in a couple of weeks because we're, we're away next next week. I'm actually having a holiday, yay! Unheard of. So there we go, nice and thick. And then I've got one here as well. So this is the same as the this one that I did. But what I've done is instead of um, really mixing the colour in, I left some white showing so it's a bit more marble. So you can see that I've actually got some bits of blue and bits of white there, which I, I really like. Um, I think that works really nicely. Um, and I was going to put some charcoal on this, but I quite like the way it is. So I'm actually going to leave that and do some um, colouring and stamping. And you've got some fine cracks, some nice thick ones there, thickish. So let me just put that to one side. Running out of room, so I will probably use the rest of this on here. So this is just um, a bauble that I had left in the in the cupboard, just with a bit of paint on. Um, I like the multicolour paint underneath because then the cracks that show through are going to be multicoloured. So I'm just going to swap my spatula and come back in with the with the white. Gosh, this is so thick. Can you see that? So again, just give it a good work. There's nothing wrong with adding a drop or two of, of water if it's easier for you to work. But remember, it's not going to hold its shape as much. And again, I'm just going to come in with this. And I want that black and white to just sort of merge together. There we go. So that's... So it's a bit, a bit like a planet. That's that's the plan anyway. 
and then we're going to get some really beautiful cracks coming through with that which is going to look great Sally says the crackle products I have which are not indigo but are quite useless <laughs> oh sorry about that <laughs> well it's not mine to apologize for what a shame I know uh, we've all done it though I, I've done it because I, I tried lots of different products you know uh, and thought oh it's not as exciting as I thought it would be and I think this tiny little bit left I can't waste it so I'm just gonna put it on the edge of this this here That's a bit mean, so I'm gonna get. Oh, can you see how thick this is? It's mad. It's lovely. That's really good because it means it, it holds its shape, it holds its structure. But again, it just needs a good, good stir. And let me just show you again. Um, what colour should we have? Um, so I'm going to go back to the translucence, okay, um, can't make my mind up today. Harry asks, could you add some of the really good spray in the mix? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can, uh, but you're not going to get any of the mica shown because this is a um, uh, opaque colour, so there's no point in shaking this because there's no way that micro is actually going to show up but I can actually, ooh nice um, make sure you dip it, dip it in lay it back on so you're going to get the pigment and the colour now can you see how soft it is? That's that's the only thing you've got to be careful of. That's why using the translucent paints are better because they've got less water in and more, um, well, more pigment for the area. Obviously, these are uh, diluted in a liquid, so you can see how you runny could, you that is. Probably spraying after it's dried. Oh yeah, I am going to spray after it's dried. Yeah, no, no I thought she said mixing it. Yeah. I thought she said mixing in. But yes, I, I, I normally spray after it's dried, yeah. Because now, can you see how runny that is? So that's not going to hold its shape terribly well. And it will take a while to crack. And it's obviously not as vivid as the spray whereas if I was to mix it with some of the um, the blue from here all you would need is let me just clean that off I'll just get a little bit of this all you need is just a, a tiny bit of this is in the navy and it's a translucent colour so that means that it's it's not got any white in it, it's um, it's completely see-through, uh, not completely see-through, it's transparent so that you can see through it to whatever colours underneath. So you can see you're getting a much stronger colour and if I was to put a tad more in, again it's going to be, oh isn't that amazing, that's gorgeous. Kelly says, so could you spray the rivet over the top or would it not stay? Oh no, that's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how you can spray it over the top. Um, and it won't kind of rub off. No, 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 it won't rub off, no. <clears throat> okay, so. Linda says, does it crack less if you water it down? Uh, only if your layer is thin. Okay, so just make sure that your layers are nice and thick. Uh, the thicker the layer, the bigger the cracks. And when I say thick, I mean really thick. You know, I'm talking about um, putting icing on a cake. You know, you want a really good good layer of it, don't you? 
Tracy says, would these work on acetate, a tag where you outline the actual acetate tag? Say that again? Would they work on acetate, a tag where you outline the actual acetate tag? Sure. Don't know what that bit means, but um, onto acetate. Uh, what will happen is that when it cracks, it will get to a stage where it will come off. So, um, and I was going to talk about that actually next. So, let me just put that to one side. Um, so, for example, if this, let me bring this one in. Just quickly, what, what Can Jill it? says, what's the difference between this and chroma crack? Right, Chroma Crackle um, is a completely different makeup of it. I love Chroma Crackle, but we can't get it at the moment. Um, it's a Chroma Crackle is clear and it actually dries white. Um, it's more fluid. Um, yes, you can mix it with paint colours, and I do love Chroma Crackle. Um, this is just slightly different. It's thicker. Uh, it's a white base. Um, again, it, it dries. This one dries quicker than Chroma Crackle. You have to leave that a good two or three days for it to work. And then, just like Chroma Crackle, in order to get it to uh, stop cracking and therefore not come off, you need to put a layer of slap it on mat over the top. Now, you don't need to with you know fine cracks like this. But with thick cracks like this, I've already put a layer of slap it on that over the top because if you continue to let it dry out, all these scales, for want of a better word, um, are going to ping off. And it's the same with acetate. As it dries, it's going to these scales are going to ping off. So um, I would recommend that I haven't tried it myself, but do an experiment on a small piece of acetate, um, put some um, slap it on mat over the top when it's it's dried. Okay, the other thing that I did do was um, I found that if you put flitter glue on um, the acetate first, um, it keeps, um, it gives you a, a sticky layer. And then if you put your crack on paste, where is it? The crack on paste over the top, it will hold on to those crackles better. So flitter glue first, let it dry um, so it's gone clear. It will still be tacky, that's what you want, and then put your crack on paste over the top. And that should work with your acetate. Um, and Perry's asked, what's the slap it on? Right, slap it on is a whole new different ball game actually. We could do a programme on just slap it on. This is a, a matte medium um, and we use it. This is uh, completely matte, which is great because it dries see through, whereas a lot of matte products still have that sort of ghosty white look to it. And you can use it for um, tissue techniques, using it to stick down rice papers because it has a really good what we call a flow rate so it means that when you've actually put it on with a brush you're not going to see those brush marks they disappear and um, you can use it on decoupage on collage when I'm using pieces of paper to build up that's fantastic because it acts as a really good glue um, what without the stickiness and of course it's matte and um, I use it as a varnish as well so if I want to protect an area before I go on to the next layer this works really well as well <clears throat> and as I say I've just used it as a varnish basically to protect this layer to stop it from coming off so we have this in matte we have it in gloss we also do a fabric and um, also we do it for glass and ceramics that you can wash afterwards so we have a whole family of slap it ons including a super thick one so I'm just going to get rid of this one here And then we're going to come onto, onto these and do some um, colouring on top. So let me just get rid of that brush there. Let me just clean up those. Okay, so 
vivids. So these are brand, brand new. Um, let me just choose a few colours. We have 10 colours at the moment. Um, I think we'll go with these. What's this one? Silver, yeah. Okay, so these are called vivids. Let me leave one on, on there, otherwise you're going to get a dizzy just looking at <laughs> looking at, at me. Okay, so these are vivid. So um, they're a spray. What's so special about these is a spray. These are basically an ink, as you can see, which stays dispersed. And then we've actually put in a mica and then some pigment powder as well. And um, also some um, other bits and pieces. And they are so vivid because I wanted a spray that was a very, very strong colour so that you can, if you wish, you can water it down and make it a lighter colour, but then you've actually got the choice. It's much better to start off with a vivid colour and then water it down than if you um, basically had a spray and it was a bit wishy-washy. You know, there's nothing worse, is there? Now, also, you'll notice that the bottles are very, very different. So, um, the other thing that really annoyed me about sprays is it doesn't matter how hard you try the spray bottles would always get bunged up so and it would be the let me just show you on here it would be the tube on the inside okay so this tube on the inside which sucks up all of the liquid obviously has to go down to the very bottom because it needs to be able to reach every last drop but the trouble is that's where the mica and the pigment powder actually settles so the problem is that if you don't shake it properly you're actually going to suck up all of that powder into here which is then going to block up the mechanism and it's going to block up your spray head here but it's most, mostly this mechanism so if you get rid of this mechanism you're not going to block up a tube because there is no tube because these actually work on a vacuum so they are airless sprays, they, um, they just, as they work on a vacuum. So if you saw this one, you can see how the bottom is pushing up, being pushed up um, by the action of spraying. Now if you have air in it like this, because that sometimes does, does happen, okay, you can quite easily, because they are so vibrant, um, you can easily just top these up with a bit of distilled water but don't worry if you haven't got distilled water you can actually just put a little bit of tap water in filtered water if best, if best or bottled water and then tighten that up really well and then away you go again so this actually pushes up all the time so you haven't got a tube that's going to get blocked at all now the other thing that will get blocked is the nozzle head because we all want a nice fine spray here and this is actually usually smaller than a pin head, uh, a, a pin. A pin won't go in these and that's going to get blocked up. Now even if we had a spray with no mica in, that's going to get blocked up if you don't keep it clean with normal water. So the way I teach is to have some clean water on your desk. You do your shake, your spray, and then you just dunk. You just dunk the head into the water, and that way you're just washing off the spray head here. So you don't want any colour on there at all. But if you just dunk it every time you spray it and give it a wipe, then you're never going to have that problem. The other thing is, these are extremely expensive bottles, okay? Now, yes, you could recycle them, but I really don't want you to do that. I want you to hang on to them because we're going to be doing a, we're working on doing an eco refill for you so that um, I can show you how to open all of this up, um, give it a wash out, and then you can refill it. Um, so please don't throw these away. Uh, don't recycle them, just hang on to them, okay? So that's a little bit about the videos. Let's have a look at the colours. So let me just bring in this sample here. 
just move those out of the way. Let's get rid of that. So here we go. So we've got, oh, you can just about see. There we go. So we've got blue satin sashes, which is a beautiful turquoise. Fresh morning mist, which is like a titanium colour. Catch a moonbeam, which is a lovely sort of sunshiny yellow colour. Uh, raindrops on roses. Perfectly precious purple. Look at that. That duo tone that you get with it. They've all got duo tones in. Um, sweet as summer peaches. Whiskers on kittens. Look at that. Gorgeous. A slice of jam and bread. Like a raspberry jam colour. A drop of golden sun. Beautiful and England's pastures green. So those are all the colours that we've got in those. So let me get my um, tags back in. So this is not quite dry. So I'll leave that for one second. I'll, I'll start on this one. So give it a shake. Give it a spray. Now you can spray really close up if you want. Nice sort of droplets and everything on there. Or you can come further away and get a really wide spread but I quite like quite close in because then I can get this to to run and actually can you see how it's pooling in there so when you've done that you just dunk and wipe and put the lid back on okay so we've got lots of lovely lovely colours what do I want I don't want a purple I don't think I want to go with gold. Why can I never find the colour that I'm looking for? So you can see how it's just settling in those cr um, those cracks now, which I think is just gorgeous. I'm just going to help that along by just pushing those in. Yeah, I like that a lot actually. Can you see what's going on there? And then they're pooling. In the little scales which is gorgeous so let me come in with this one there so that one is your fresh morning mist give it a dunk lid on that's really lovely yeah that works really well I think I might have come further away with that so I'm just gonna move that around I like these splodges and then maybe a touch of warmth what should we go for some of peaches or should we go for golden sun let's let's try a bit of golden sun let's just go really close in here and see whether oh that's clever isn't it oh don't do that in your face Kay that's not a good idea Give these a good shake, that always helps. Oops, let's give that a little bit of a touch there. Yeah, I think mixing it in is actually quite nice. And I like the silver over the top. Give that a dunk and a wipe. And I think I'm going to leave that to dry first before I put any more on. And then this one definitely needs some colour. So I'm just going to come in with lots of sweet summer peaches. Give it a dunk, lid on, and then I'm just going to let that run into all those cracks. And that's going to, because that colour underneath was horrendously bad. And that's going to just look fabulous. So I think maybe it needs some added warmth. So should we try raindrops on roses? How are we for time? Oh gosh, I've gone really over time. Sorry, are you all bored to death now? No, okay. I'm hanging on. You're hanging on by the skin of your teeth. Okay, I am sorry. I just got a little bit carried away, didn't I? <laughs> Any more questions and I'll, uh, I'll sign off shortly. Okay.
Any more questions? No? Okay, I'll carry on playing. <laughs> but I hope that that's given you a bit of an insight into the different crackles. So, as I say, just to recap, so you've seen the crackler, you've seen the crack on paste in the black and the white, and then we actually did the, the crack on glaze as well. So hopefully you've got some insight into all those different crackles. Teresa says, can you adopt me? <laughs> oh, bless, yeah. <laughs> the trouble is I get into sort of playing, you see. It's just like when you're <laughs> at the kitchen with, the, with your friends. And uh, I just wanted to show you very, very quickly, just before you go, uh, some samples of what you can do with the, the crackles are just gorgeous with the that's with the luscious and um, this is just with plain um, paint that's the paste and all of these so I just had those to show you as well okay thank you so much for joining us it's been lovely to see you just before you go make sure you have actually commented liked and shared because we want to give away all of these lovely goodies here um, how many people are giving these away to two people Th oh three people today Okay, so three people are going to get all of these goodies in the post to them. Um, it will be drawn tomorrow by Ella, as per usual. Uh, we are going um, on a, a little um, staycation next week. Well, we're not going to North Yorkshire with the doggies. And, um, and we will be back in a couple of weeks. So thank you so much for watching. It's lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for your questions and your comments. Um, lots of love to you all. Stay safe. Bye for now. Say bye, Alfie. Bye. Bye.